Hey friends, welcome back to the garage. My name is Jim with Philly Fix and it's time for another Cheap Tool Tuesday. All right, so today I have to admit, uh, I'm doing a tool that arguably is not that cheap, uh, but you'll see what I mean. So it's the Energitech, Energitech, Energitech uh, 18 gauge Brad Nailer. Now this was sent to me free of charge by Energitech and uh, they asked me if I wanted to review it. Of course, as with any company offering to send me tools, I always let them know that I'm gonna give my honest opinion regardless if it's positive or negative. They were on board with that, so uh, here we are. But as usual, always wanna let you guys know when I'm testing a tool that I didn't pay for. Uh, so as soon as this thing came, which by the way, they sent me the, the tool uh, which came with a charger and then they sent me the batteries in a separate package. But as soon as this thing came, I looked at the charger and I said, hmm, that looks awfully familiar. Uh, this looks like a Makita charger to me. So we're gonna get this thing opened up, see what's in there, but I suspect it's gonna take Makita batteries. We'll see what happens. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna compare this Brad Nailer to my trusty old Ryobi 18 gauge Brad Nailer. I've used this thing a lot. Um, this was actually the first Ryobi tool I bought. Uh, I shortly bought the 16 gauge after that, but this is actually what got me into the Ryobi line. I love this thing. We're gonna see how the Energitech uh, holds up against the Ryobi. Now, at the beginning I said it's not necessarily a cheap tool. This Energitech nailer actually goes for $109 on Amazon Bare Tools, so you don't even get a battery and charger with it. Um, but we'll see if it takes Makita batteries and that might factor into the value proposition. So let's start by unboxing this thing and see what you get. Okay, so starting out looking at the specs on the box, uh, it says it can do an average of 60 nails per minute or a maximum of 100 nails per minute. So you should be able to get one nail per second out of this tool. Uh, it says it'll hold uh, 50 millimeter 18 gauge Brad nails. That's about two inches uh, for those of us that don't use the metric system. And it also does one and a half inch or 40 millimeter 18 gauge light duty staples, uh, which we would typically call crown staples. Um, and let's see, it says it can do 400 nails on a full charge. Uh, we'll see what size batteries we got with this kit. I assume that's what they're quoting it for, uh, but 400 nails per shot. So, and it also looks like it gives you a 200 pack of one and a half inch Brad nails and a 200 pack of, I'm guessing 32 millimeters is like an inch, uh, light duty staples or uh, crown staples. So that's what the specs are. Let's get this thing open. Also features LED indicate light. Great. Depth adjustment wheel, nail viewer window. I like to watch my nails. Single contact firing knob. So I guess this is uh, single mode versus rapid fire and a belt hook. All right, let's get this thing open. Got a branding sheet here. Here's the nailer itself. All right, so that's it right there. Looks like you've got a single fire, rapid fire, or bump, bump fire switch here. Here's your belt hook, which is actually plastic. Um, this is your nail window to tell you if you've got any nails left in it. Here's your adjustment knob on top. Now, I'll be honest with you guys. One of the reasons I wanted to review this nailer is because this looks an awful lot like the Bauer at Harbor Freight. I'll put it, uh, I'll step aside so I can put it up on the screen over here. Uh, but this looks a lot like that Bauer nailer. I suspect it's manufactured by the same same company, except uh, I'm guessing it's made to take Makita batteries, but we'll get to the batteries here in a sec. Uh, you got a couple LED lights on either side. We'll see how effective those are, uh, but that's about it for unboxing. You've also got a, uh, looks like this is probably your box of uh, staples and nails here. All right, but pretty, actually decent packaging. You got nice foam here. now. I would probably obviously trade this for maybe a contractor bag, but um, this is actually some of the nicer packaging I've seen out of a, a, a brand that's well less known. Less well known. Okay, and like I said, as soon as I saw the charger, I said, that looks awfully familiar. Uh, so, you know, I think you can see the similarities between 
this charger and the Makita charger. So what I'm just going to do real quick, here's a five amp hour Makita battery. Let's see if it fits on this charger. Yep. Sure enough. Uh, I'm not going to risk charging my Makita battery on this charger, but, uh, if it fits, it ships. Let's see if it, uh, it works on the tool at least to turn. I don't have any nails in here, but let's see if the LEDs come on. Yep. There you go. You got your LED lights coming on. So it appears, oh, and you also have an indicator light here. Uh, looks like LED green, no nails, LED green flashing overheat, LED red low battery, and LED red flashing means a jam. That's actually kind of nice. Um, I don't, I don't know that I've used a nailer with an indicator light. Now, granted, my, my experience is mostly limited to Ryobi, and I have a couple of Metabo nailers, so maybe Milwaukee or DeWalt or somebody has an indicator light like that. Um, but that's kind of handy. Um, pretty unique. So, and it looks like it has a little extra thing down here just so you can turn the LED light on. All right, and of course, they sent me two batteries here. Let's see what we got. Yeah, so these are three amp hour clearly modeled after Makita batteries. They do have a battery gauge on the back. Looks like the battery's fully charged. So that's kind of nice. Um, a lot of times you get these cheaper batteries or, or uh, imitation knockoff batteries and they don't have a charger, a charge indicator on the back. So we've got two of these three amp hour batteries. All right, so that's what they gave me. Let's uh, do some tests on this nailer and see how it performs. Okay, so I've got some two inch uh, brad nails. That's the maximum this is supposed to be able to handle. So I will open up the magazine here, slip these in. Nice smooth action on the magazine. Uh, I'm gonna put this in single fire mode on the switch. We will put our, I'm gonna use the Enegitech battery to start out. And I've got a couple scrap pieces of two by four here. No major knots. Um, let's get this dial. I'm going to set the dial all the way to the shallow setting. All right, so it's all the way to the shallow setting. Let's see what it does on that setting. By the way, there's no like knob on the back to set your air pressure. Um, it is in tool air compressor is what it says on the side. Um, like on the Ryobi, you actually have both a depth setting knob on the front and like a power knob on the back, but no such adjustment on this one, just the depth knob. So here we are with it set all the way out in our two by four pine. Okay, you've got maybe one or two millimeters or maybe a little over a 16th, almost an eighth of an inch above the surface of the wood. So there you go. Let me get you zoomed in a little more. Let's try that again. I don't know what happened there. I must have hit something. Okay, let me turn the depth knob all the way to the other side and see how it does. Just barely passed flush on that. That one sunk a little bit more. So if you push it down, then pull the trigger. I don't know what's happening there. There we go. A couple of these bent over. I know that if you go with the grain against the grain, it can make a difference. Huh. See these nails getting twisted up when I'm shooting them? See, now that one's okay. These are sunk really, really well. But if you kind of hit it and pull the trigger too quick, it doesn't sink quite as much. But if you sink it, then pull the trigger deliberately. It's definitely well below flush. Let me crank it back maybe halfway or so. Still, still sinking countersunk, just barely, but just below the surface on this. Uh, I don't know why these nails were getting twisted up. I, there's nothing going on in this wood, but see, there's another one. That one's fine. And maybe if I'm, am I tilting it? No, it's not tilting. Let me tilt it backwards. I'm not sure why these were getting twisted up like that. Yeah, there's another one.
That one got twisted up. Another one. So I've shot, I don't know, 20 nails, 25 and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Got mangled like that. I'm not sure why. And we're gonna see how quickly we can do this. I got a kind of a rhythm there earlier, so I think I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna hold the trigger in. Here we go. All right, so I'll put the timer on the screen. We'll see how long that took. It did fudge up one of the nails here. I don't know why it's doing that on some of these. Here, did another one. I wonder if it's because I'm pulling up before I let it drive the nail the whole way. Let me try that. Let me put it on single fire mode to try this. Nah, because that's straight and I pulled up early. It's not twisting it. I don't know why it's doing that once in a while. These are old Harbor Freight Central Pneumatic Brad nails. Um, I might have some DeWalt's that are shorter, that are a little higher quality. So maybe it's the nails, although I can't say I've had the same problems with my Ryobi. So let me get some of the nails uh, into the Ryobi and I'll see if I'm having the same issue and the same boards with the same exact nails. I'll take those out. Take the battery out. All right, so I've got few of the same nails left. So let me just put those right in here, make sure I've got, they're coming from the same batch and the same box of nails and all that stuff. All right. Um, I'm going to set the depth all the way down on this, which it's already there. I'm going to set the pressure pretty much all the way up on this. All right, let's see how this goes with the Ryobi. All right, looks like I used up, well, there's a few nails left. That's one gripe I have about the Ryobi is when you have a few nails left, it acts like it's on dry fire lockout. Um, speaking of dry fire lockout, let's see if this nailer has it. This is completely empty. It is on dry fire lockout. The green LED is on indicating no nails. So I like that. Okay, so now I've got some uh, one and a half inch nails. I've got stack of uh, red oak here. So we're going to put our nails in the Negitech. All right, let's see how it goes on the red oak. Not quite flush. Let me turn that dial all the way to the right. Okay. So it's flush, but it again, it leaves just a little bit of that dent in the wood. Let me see if I can dial it in. So I'll, I'll crank this back just a little bit. So let's see if I can dial it in where it drives the nail flush without leaving that marring or that dent. Mm. Still a little bit of a dent. I don't know if you can see it on camera there, but this was a previously uh, polyurethane piece of wood. So it's, why it's glossy like that. See if I dial it back just a little bit more. Uh, it's it's pretty much exactly flush with the surface, and again, it's still leaving just a little bit of a dent there. Let's see if I can how quickly I can go into this oak. I'm gonna put it on bump fire mode. Let's see how it goes. All right, so pretty quick. No twisted nails this time, which is interesting, but I'm also using one and a half inch nails uh, instead of 
the full two inch nails. Uh, but most of those were flush. I think the ones that were not quite flush, I probably pulled back before it was done driving. Uh, so it's probably on me. Let me go on this little edge here with the Ryobi and, and see how it performs comparably. Again, taking my batch of nails out of this gun and putting them directly into the Ryobi so that we're knowing we're doing, we know that we're doing apples to apples comparison. Let's see, with everything turned all the way up on the Ryobi, let's see how it does. Now that's sinking it pretty well on there. Um, those are pretty far in there. So let me turn this down just a little bit. Still sinking them pretty good. I'm gonna turn the depth knob all the way down on this thing. Now they're just flush. Okay, we're gonna do a time trial here. I've got two inch brads back in the gun. I've got some soft pine trim boards here. We're gonna see how long it takes to do 10 nails in the trim board versus the Ryobi. Here we go. All right guys, well that was the Enegitac 18 gauge Brad nailer. Uh, what do I think of it? Well, actually I think it's a decent nailer. Um, if you're in the Makita platform, you already have batteries and chargers. Uh, this might be a good option for occasional use. If you just have to put up a piece of trim in your house once in a while, you just want to hold a couple pieces of wood together while you let the glue set on them, things like that. Although I might use a pin nailer for that application, but uh, for occasional use, I, I think this could be a good option. What are my concerns? Well, my concerns are once in a while it twists a nail. It just kind of gets folded over on top of the wood for some reason. Uh, I tried holding it at different angles, not letting it fully drive, and I wasn't able to make it happen on demand, but it certainly happened with, uh, I'd say, 10 to 15% of the drives I did. Uh, but, you know, it's not a bad nailer, and I would bet that this is the same gun as the Bauer at Harbor Freight, with just a different battery interface on it. Uh, battery interface? Anyway, uh, maybe I can get my hands on that Bauer. It's not in stock at my local store. My local store seems to be pretty bad with Bauer and Hercules stock as far as batteries and certain tools. But if I do get my hands on it, I will do a comparison for you guys. Uh, but thanks for watching. My name is Jim with Philly Fixed and God bless. Hello, I'm Jim Davis.